John and Maggie. I've never really thought much about where the syrup is coming from, have you? Well, I know it comes from this bottle. I know it comes from trees and a lot of other stuff about it. You know more about it? I do. Well, maybe this week on Wolfridge Nat Neat Nature Facts, we'll talk about the physiology behind maple syruping. Wow! Come join! Hey folks, so here we are at a maple tree. Maple trees can be identified a couple of ways. One thing that you can look at is the branching of their, their stalks here. So we have opposite branching, meaning that these stems are across from each other. Um, a couple other types of trees have opposite branching in the Northwoods, including black ash and dogwood trees. Yes, another way you can identify a maple tree in winter is as maple trees age, their furrows and plates get a little bigger. Let's learn a little bit more about maple physiology. So Jenna and Maggie, now that I know how to identify a maple tree, I'm still confused as to what's happening inside of it. Well, in the summertime, photosynthesis produces sugar with um, carbon dioxide, water, and sunlight. It's stored in the leaves for immediate use, but then the rest of it is stored as starch. So as you all know, in the winter time, a tree doesn't have leaves, it's relatively inactive, and all the starch that was produced in the summer is still being stored. And then as spring rolls around, we have about a six to eight week window where sap is flowing when we have warm days and freezing nights. More pressure is created inside of the tree than outside, which causes the xylem to send sap upwards towards the branches and we can then tap the trees and allow some of that sap to flow out of it. Springtime is really unique because that starch that was stored all winter long is transferred into sugars and sugars are transferred through the xylem where normally they are transferred through the flow of As our climate begins to warm, we're going to experience some changes with our maple tap. Historically, this has happened at the same time every year, but as we start to get warmer winters and more irregular weather patterns, we can expect that our tapping season is going to be earlier than it has been in the past. We can also expect that maple ranges will be changing. So maple syrup is really delicious, and we'll teach you a little bit about how to tap a tree. So Ojibwe people and native people started off tapping trees and over time um, different methods have been used. So these are some examples of spiles. This is an older spile and spiles always feature a hole for the sap to run through and also a little hook for whatever the vessel that collects the sap is. So when you're looking for a tree to tap, you want to find a maple with a nice big covering of branches and it has to be at least eight inches in diameter so that we're not harming that tree. And the first thing you need to do is drill in to the bark so that we can access the xylem. After that, we're gonna use a spile and pound it into the tree. <laughs> and then we wait for the sap to flow. You can use um, a milk jug, you can use a bucket or a plastic bag. Maple tapping is very accessible if you have a maple tree in your backyard. One maple tree in a single season can produce about 5 to 15 gallons of sap and it takes about 40 gallons of sap to make a single gallon of maple syrup because the sap only has about 2, per, two to 3 percent sugar content and the rest is water. So here at Wolf Ridge, the way that we process our sap is we boil it in this wood stove. And eventually it turns into delicious maple syrup. Thanks for hanging out with Jenna, Maggie, and I. I know I learned a lot about maple syruping today. And the next time I have maple syrup on my pancakes, I'll have a lot greater appreciation for the work that goes into them and the amazing trees that are doing a great job to produce it. Have a great day. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>